This video is brought to you by Madhouse Collectibles. Hey everybody, welcome to Transformers Masterpiece Theater. I'm the Rest of Mechanic, and today we've got our very own triple threat match between Fans Toys FT49 Phantasm. We're going to compare that to Transform Element TE03 Speedstar and MMC PS01 Sphinx. Remember all those classic triple threat matches? Kurt Angle, The Rock, and The Undertaker, Edge, Jeff Hardy, and Triple H, or my personal favorite, Triple H, Chris Benoit, and Shawn Michaels, classics. But that's not why you're here. Instead, we'll be doing a comparison between these three masterpiece scale figures, which are all variations of Mirage from the G1 cartoon, and we'll see which one I think comes out the champ. Let's dig into it. Very quickly, we'll just start off with the boxes. Uh, for Phantasm, it's a standard fans toys box basic black cube uh, it is nice and sturdy there's some excellent box art going on here for the uh, robot mode and the alt mode on the front and of course you've got the uh, bio and uh, some extra picks on the back um, for uh, MMC uh, same for MMC it's the standard uh, white box so it's a lot smaller obviously uh, white but the box art on the front is fantastic it looks like it's something right out of the uh, G1 cartoon and then on the back you've got the uh, bio stack card which is mimicking what we used to get on the original G1 toy boxes so lots of good nostalgia here on, on the back of this box uh, for Transform Element, a little more disappointing box from Transform Element. The box art is very nice. It's uh, pretty stylized. It's almost a comic book style. It's quite impressive, but the box itself is uh, paper thin and it doesn't hold up very well. Didn't take me very long uh, before I ended up creasing the box. This happened just for me trying to uh, hold the box while pulling the bubble packaging out of the top. Um, and the top flap also tore at one point. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Uh, just for me trying to open the box. Uh, and the front of the box and the back of the box are identical. So uh, not much uh, to talk about there. Just talk about the packaging very quickly. Uh, Phantasm comes with the typical Fans Toy Styrofoam Cube. Uh, everything inside the Styrofoam Cube has form-fitted areas for the figure and the accessories. The figure does come in robot mode, which I find is always nice. Uh, you get to get that initial impression of the figure itself or the character as soon as you pull it out of the box. There's also a plastic sheet that's in there that separates the top half of the Styrofoam cover from the front of the figure, and that is, of course, to protect the paint, which is always a nice addition to see from Fans Toys. Each of the accessories... Uh, are in individual Ziploc bags with the exception of the weapons. Uh, and of course, all those accessories are tucked away in their individual areas in the styrofoam. Uh, for Sphinx, he has the uh, plastic bubble packaging that's inside. It's also form-fitted, but the figure does come in its alt mode. Again, it's a little disappointing seeing the figure in its alt mode first. Um, all of the accessories are also just loose in a bag that's underneath the uh, bubble packaging. It's just sort of floating around in there. For Speedstar, again, same thing. Uh, plastic bubble packaging, also form-fitting, but he does come in robot mode. Again, uh, I, I like it when they do come in the uh, robot mode. And um, the bubble packaging also has areas for each individual accessory, so each of the accessories are sitting in their own individual areas. Overall, Phantasm feels really solid, just like you'd expect from a Fans Toys figure. Uh, it's got some good weight overall, uh, lots of die cast parts inside, uh, in particular uh, inside the torso. It's mostly made up of a um, die cast uh, component that everything else attaches to. The feet are also die cast, so it gives it some nice stability. Tolerances on all these soft pressure joints is tight, but it's not too tight. Sometimes we get those Fans Toys figures where you can't even move some of the joints. The only ratcheted joint is actually in the knees, uh, which again gives uh, some strength to that particular joint. Uh, but the problem with ratcheted joints is that you do get some floppiness sometimes. And again, in particular, one of the knees in this particular figure is a little looser than the other one. For Sphinx, it doesn't have the uh, doesn't quite have the same solidness as with uh, Phantasm. Um, interestingly, the weight is about the same. Might even be a little bit heavier. Uh, it does have a similar amount of die cast throughout uh, the upper torso. The feet aren't die cast uh, like with Phantasm. All the joints feel smooth and tight, but there is some floppiness in some areas, particularly around the uh, shoulder and the butterfly joint. 
the forearms are just hollow and they don't really lock into place, which makes it overall, it gives that overall feeling of it being cheap. Um, the hip panels and the ab crunch are particularly loose. Uh, the hip panels in particular, they just flop around whenever you're doing any posing. Shoulder panels also don't tab in and sometimes have a tendency of flopping around. Uh, overall, the plastic feels very thin and cheap, uh, especially around those leg panels that become the sides of the car as you're doing the transformation. Plastic on Speedstar feels on par with fans' toys, uh, but it is uh, lighter overall just from the lack of die cast. Only the feet are die cast on this figure, as far as I can tell. There's no ratcheted joints anywhere. All the joints are nice and tight and smooth across the figure. Does have a bit of a loose feeling to it though, especially in the ab crunch and the uh, thigh rotations a bit too loose for my liking. Sometimes makes getting his legs to face the right direction when you're posing a little difficult because you just can't seem to get it to line up the way you want. Uh, shoulder panels are also very loose since they don't lock in, so those panels on the side with the uh, Jetain's logo, they will also just flop around while you're doing any posing. As usual, Fans Toys nails the cartoon accuracy on this one, getting the differences in the uh, various colors uh, extremely accurate, especially around the torso. Uh, you have those pearl white arms, chest, and the upper thighs with the light blue torso, knees, and feet, so the light blue torso in behind the main chest component. Um, there's a few too many panel lines that are going on in the legs, though, which is a little distracting. Uh, you have the little tabs that are in the knees and then the little panel uh, on, you know, just above the feet uh, where the ankles are. So it's a little bit distracting down there. Uh, the uh, shoulder missile is a little bit small as well, uh, but it is part of the transformation, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So there is a little bit of genius engineering that's going on there that kind of makes the size of the shoulder cannon acceptable. So for Sphinx, uh, before I get into the comparison, I just want to point out that this is the 01C or the cell version. So it's the same as the original, but it doesn't have all of the uh, real world elements that were on the original from the uh, ELF um, F1 race car. Uh, so it doesn't have the ELF logo or the number on the chest, and it doesn't have some of those additional paint details. And the uh, 01C version is actually darker than the original. So for the comparison of this, just keep that in mind. Um, but I did find that uh, Sphinx in general seems to be taking a lot of cues or details from the toy as opposed to the cartoon. Although the head sculpt and face sculpt uh, both look like the cartoon, which I find interesting that they would go for a more toy accurate look given that the box art on the box is actually from the cartoon. Um, but some of the elements you'll see like the knees are the actual two engine halves instead of just kneecaps. Uh, both the feet are the spoilers um, instead of flip out feet. The upper thighs also have some additional line details or grooves going on in them that you don't see in the cartoon. Uh, same thing with the upper thighs. Uh, there's some line details in there that take cues from the toy and not from the cartoon. Um, and the only other difference really is the uh, shoulder cannon is actually an accessory. Uh, it's not part of the transformation, so it's a clip-on accessory. And I do find it's excessively large compared to the other two. It almost seems way out of proportion. For Speedstar, it is a brighter blue than Phantasm. Um, again, I don't feel like it is as uh, cartoon accurate as uh, Phantasm is. However, it does it does have a nicer presence on your shelf. It is that nice brighter blue. So there is that aspect of it as well. Um, the knees, the feet, and the front spoiler are silver. Uh, again, doesn't quite line up with the cartoon because in the cartoon, all that stuff was light blue. The shoulder cannon is part of the transformation as well, which is, again, a very nice touch. It does seem to be more proportionate to, you know, what's going on in the cartoon, a little bit bigger than the one that's on Phantasm. Unfortunately for the transformation, although it does tuck in underneath the front of the alt mode, which is really, really neat, you do have to remove the uh, rocket or the warhead, so that's a little irritating. For all three of them, they all have excellent face sculpts. They're all very cartoon accurate. Speedstar's eyes do pop a little bit better than the other two. The other two kind of have that dead eye look unless you've got the exact right lighting uh, hitting them in the front. All three of them have some type of variation of the Jetain's logo or the Satane's logo and some variation along with uh, the number 26. All of them have the same details in the upper chest, that half moon shape with the red stripes going on. Sphinx and um, 
Phantasm seemed to slide down a little bit too far if you don't place it exactly properly. So sometimes you lose part of the red striping in the bottom half. All three of them have rubber tires, which is a very nice addition. And they all have some details in the center waist that match the uh, cartoon rendition as well. For size, uh, all three of them are approximately the same size. They all have varying proportions. I would say that Fans Toys uh, arms seem to be a little better proportioned while uh, Transform Element and uh, MMC arms seem almost, um, almost seem to be too long. Uh, almost like we're getting, getting into gorilla arms that, that they're almost down to their knees. Um, and I would say that the Speed Star chest does seem to be more filled out. Again, sometimes I feel like Speedstar has a little bit of a better um, shelf presence uh, just because of its proportions in the chest as well as the coloring of the paint. Phantasm's got a nice, solid, uh, sturdy alt mode. Everything locks in very well. When you take a look at the bottom or the rest of the alt mode in general, everything is tucked away very, very nicely. It's got rubber tires. It rolls very well. Nice amount of clearance uh, underneath the bottom of the alt mode. Some nice engine details going on. It's completely painted in silver. The uh, cockpit's got a uh, steering wheel de detail as well as uh, nice looking mirrors that are on either side that I think are more accurate to uh, an actual F1 race car. Cetane's logo is sitting on the side with the number 26. Of course, Cetane's is a variation of the actual Cetane's logo from the uh, French cigarette company. There's a bit too much paneling that's going on in the back end. It's it's not terrible, but it is kind of noticeable as, as you're going through the transformation and then you have the alt mode completed, you'll notice those panel lines that are there in the back on the other side of the engine. There's weapon storage that's in the spoiler, so that's a nice addition. I always like a little bit of weapon storage. Phantasm's a little smaller than the other um, two variations, Speedstar and uh, Sphinx. Uh, it is a little bit smaller, so it doesn't quite seem to scale well with the other MP uh, car bots, only because an F1 race car is normally a little bit longer than a typical car that you'll see on the road. So when you sit Phantasm next to, say, Jazz or Ratchet or any of the other car bots, it just seems like he's a little bit too small. Sphinx, on the other hand, feels really fiddly. It just doesn't lock in well once you've completed the transformation. Uh, in particular, the shoulders want to constantly move out of position or, or pop out of place when you're handling him. Front spoiler is another issue. The, uh, the, the two ends that slide out, they don't lock in in any way, so they are constantly sliding back into the uh, center position. And the front tires constantly want to fold up as well. They don't lock in, and they're on a uh, uh, die-cast pivot joint. Uh, that just doesn't lock in. The tires are rubber, so that is nice as well, but it just doesn't roll well. There's not enough clearance in the alt mode to have all four tires touching the surface that it's on and have it roll freely. Cockpit does have a steering wheel detail in it, just like Phantasm, but the mirrors that are on either side of the cockpit are barely noticeable. They're almost just little tiny pegs. does have the uh, Cetane's logo with the number 26 on it, just like Phantasm. Uh, which again is a variation of Jetain's, the uh, the French uh, cigarette company. Um, some nice engine detail as well. It is also completely painted silver. Spoiler does seem to be way too big. It is the uh, front of the feet in the robot mode, but they just seem ginormous uh, and, and stick up way too high on this particular alt mode. It is more in scale with the other MP car bots. It's uh, similar length and, uh, or sorry, similar width to uh, the other MP scale car bots and a little bit longer as you'd expect an F1 race car to be. Speedstar has also got a solid alt mode. Everything locks in okay, but it does have a tendency of some stuff to uh, untab. This might have something to do with mine. It might have that universal joint reversed issue. I haven't really looked into it, uh, but everything does still tuck away very, very nicely. It has rubber tires as well. It does roll very well. Actually, out of all three of them, it probably rolls the best. Uh, does actually have the Jetain's logo or name, uh, as opposed to the other two that have that uh, variation. Also has the number 26 on the side. Uh, there's paneling up front around the vents, which are extremely distracting in uh, this alt mode. It, it kind of takes away from that shelf presence. There's actually a panel line that's right down the middle of the set of silver vents. It is much bigger than the other two. It's wider and taller. Does kind of make it look a little over proportioned compared to other MP scale car bots. Again, an F1 racer is 
about the same width as a regular streetcar. It's just longer. So in this alt mode, it just looks way too big. Looking at the paint, uh, Phantasm is fully painted from top to bottom, has lots of nice uh, metallic and pearlescent finishes throughout all the colors. There's that eggshell finish on the light blue that looks really, really nice, again, matching the cartoon. Overall, really well done. It looks looks really, really good on the shelf. The um, Unfortunately, the pearl white is prone to some flaking. Uh, I noticed that uh, during my transformations on the uh, rear of the forearm that collapses in. Uh, but I've even noticed some of it around the bicep swivel in one of the arms. Sphinx is a... Uh, Complete contrast to Phantasm in regards to the paint. It has very little paint applications overall. In fact, I believe the only parts on it that are painted are the uh, parts that are painted silver and the red stripe that's going on in the upper half of the chest. Um, the face is also painted, but I noticed that there is some uh, paint application areas that are sloppy along the sides of the chest. It's like they tried to paint the face while it was... Uh, still inside the head sculpt instead of, uh, you know, painting it separately. When you look at the other alternate faces, they're fine. They're fully painted all the way around. But the original face uh, faceplate that comes in the head sculpt is missing some paint on the sides. For Speedstar, he is fully painted top to bottom. Um, white and blue areas are a nice high gloss finish. Uh, the black in the shoulders and the hands is more of a semi-gloss finish, and the silver is, um, well, it's it's silver, um, and that's on the knees and the feet. There is a painted Ford logo that's on the engine. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not even sure that there's a Ford engine in the uh, Elf Racer, which is what this is supposed to be modeled after. Um, there's also some paint imperfections, at least on my copy, that were on the uh, the feet, uh, I actually had a blue speck of uh, paint that's on top of the silver that I cannot get off. Um, and there's also some silver flaking or uh, flex that ended up on the uh, engine, which is painted black. For the transformation, Phantasm has a very easy and fairly intuitive transformation. Everything on it does lock in very, very nicely. The tolerances on the shoulders are a bit of a struggle to collapse. Um, again, one of those steps where it's a little bit frightening, like at any moment you could snap the shoulder off, but just work at it gently and it will collapse down for the alt mode. As always, Fansoys is now providing us with these very nicely detailed instruction booklets um, that actually have uh, colored parts that show which parts need to be moved and how. They've also started releasing all these videos as well, which are also very helpful. You just need to follow the QR code that's on the box. The most impressive part of the transformation is the missile launcher transformation. Hiding the missile launcher in the backpack without having to remove the uh, the warhead is absolute transformation genius. For Sphinx transformation, unfortunately, every step of that transformation just feels really fiddly and the thin plastic uh, makes some of the steps very, very scary. Like you could break one of the, uh, the panels um, or the connectors of the joints at any minute. Uh, the head is a struggle to collapse. It's it's sitting on a ball joint that also has like a pivot point. So you need to sort of roll the head back and then push it down into the upper torso so that you can fold up the um, um, the front uh, front part of the alt mode. Um, but the, the it's like you're always fighting with the head on the ball joint to get it to move. Everything doesn't really peg well together, which is a little surprising because you can see that there are tabs and pegs and stuff that should pin together, but in some instances, it just doesn't seem to want to pop into place. The cockpit transformation is super frustrating and extremely scary. It's so tight. The tolerances are so bad when you're trying to split apart the cockpit, rotate it around 100 degrees, and then get it to tab into place. I, I'm always scared that the 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 two plastic arms that are holding either half of the, the the back half of the cockpit are going to snap off at any moment the instructions are a small pamphlet style set of instructions but they are surprisingly detailed they actually have uh, colored sections to show which parts to transform and also a brief description of the type of movement that you need to complete to do that step of the transformation it also has a qr code to transform with a video that's actually completed by Pake for life Speedstar's transformation is fairly easy and smooth all around. 
The leg transformation is a little bit confusing to get it to collapse and rotate into place, but everything does tab in well and everything does lock into place. Getting the legs to tab in was difficult. Uh, I may have that hip issue that I was talking about earlier. I'm, I'm, not, I'm still not convinced that I have it. Um, but if I do, then that might explain why I was having so much difficulty in getting the legs to clap and collapse and pin into the right position. I also had an issue with the slider pins on the spoiler being seized on mine. I actually had to take a pair of vice grips and, and grab the pin and move it across through the, um, the arm that it is sitting inside of. There's no included instructions with this figure, which... I'm not sure how I feel about, um, I, I feel like I would always want a set of instructions with my figure, but of course they also do have a video with a QR code on the box that you can scan and go and check out the video. The video is very, very well done, um, so that's nice. And again, hiding the missile launcher uh, as part of the transformation under the front hood is also some transformation cleverness, but unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, you do have to remove the missile of the warhead, so... Reverse weapon storage? For the accessories, Phantasm does come with a well-sculpted and cartoon-accurate painted rifle. It is an eggshell blue that's the uh, same color as the other eggshell blue areas that are on the body. It does come with an extra head sculpt as well, which is, unfortunately, it's barely different from the original one that's on the body, so hashtag unnecessaries. It also comes with two alternate faces, uh, as well as the warhead for the rocket launcher. And with every Fans Toys figure, of course, we have the BioStack card. Nice hard plastic credit card feel to a very nice addition. For Sphinx, he comes with a sculpted rifle. It's not really cartoon accurate. It seems like it's a more stylized take from MMC. It is painted, though. It is painted silver, same silver as what's on the body. Also comes with three alternate faces. Uh, has a completely separate missile and rocket launcher that's not part of the figure as opposed to the other two where it is part of the figure and part of the transformation. In this case, it's a, uh, an accessory that you tab onto one of the shoulders. Comes with a hologram, hologram driver as well that is a translucent blue color, fits into the cockpit of the alt mode. Uh, well, nice addition for this uh, Mirage is that it does come with the parasail or parachute that we do see in the first few episodes uh, after he, you know, destroys the nemesis and jumps out. Uh, so that's a cool accessory. Also comes with a bio stack card like Fans Toys, but it's made out of a, a soft cardboard as well. Again, I, I would prefer these to be uh, more hard plastic just so that they, you know, stand up to the test of time. Uh, and it also has the secret decoder strip inside, which is a, you know, a, a nice nostalgic addition as well that lets you uh, more easily read the stats that are on the back of the box. And for Speedstar, he also comes with a well-sculpted rifle as well. It is painted silver, again, matching the silver that's on the body. He comes with an extra head sculpt that has an alternate face. Um... I'm not sure why the extra head sculpt, though, maybe just to make it easier to swap the tomb around because the two head sculpts look almost identical. Uh, you have the warhead for the rocket launcher that just easily slides into place, and then there is one other alternate face as well. Let's take a look at the articulation, uh, starting with the head for Phantasm. It is on a pivot joint uh, instead of a ball joint compared to the other two, so it does have 360 degree rotation but can only tilt front and back, as opposed to Sphinx and Speedstar that both have a ball joint, so 360 degree rotation for both of those. Both of them can look forward and back, but they also have that head tilt. Looking at the shoulders along the vertical axis, Phantasm has a 360 degree rotation, as does Speedstar. Uh, Sphinx comes out a little bit ahead there. It does have a 360 degree rotation, but it also has a butterfly joint built in so you can rotate the arms uh, towards the center of the chest. On the horizontal axis, the shoulders on Phantasm barely make it past 90 degrees. It has to do with the shoulder panel. Uh, it does get in the way. Uh, Sphinx has a uh, double pivot in the shoulder, so it allows the arm to go up 180 degrees straight up and down, and Speedstar gets just a little bit past 90 degrees. The shoulder rocket on all three of them varies. Um, on Phantasm, it does have a little bit of articulation that lets it rotate left and right. Um, it does travel up and over, which is part of the transformation, so it can point straight up in the air 90 degrees, and it does tilt down slightly. 
Um, with Sphinx, it is an accessory. It doesn't have, uh, it has barely any articulation at all. The uh, connector that pins it on the shoulder does pivot to allow the accessory to point up and down. But when you pin it on the shoulder, you can't actually point it up in the air because the shoulder gets in the way. So really you can only point it down slightly. Speedstar's uh, accessory, or sorry, Rocket, uh, is also part of the transformation, so it has the most articulation. You can move it left or right over 45 degrees. It does go straight up and past 90 degrees, and it also allows you to tilt down slightly. All three of them have the same bicep rotation, 360 degrees. Um, all of them have pretty much the same elbow uh, joint uh, pivot, uh, which allows them to get uh, almost 180 degrees. Speedstars is a double, so it does actually go the full 180. Uh, wrist rotation on all three is the same as 360 degrees. Uh, for the fingers, Phantasm has a single pin for all of uh, the fingers, uh, and they're all fixed together. Uh, Sphinx has a single pin but has a separate index finger from the other three and Speedstar uh, has a single pin for all of them same as Phantasm. The thumb is fixed on Phantasm and Sphinx. Uh, Speedstar actually has a pin in the thumb that lets you rotate the thumb up and down again. It's a little bit part of the transformation when you're hiding the hand away but it does give you some flexibility uh, especially when you're trying to put his uh, rifle into his hand you can actually get the thumb out of the way. For the waist, Phantasm has a ratcheted 360 degree rotation and a very slight ab crunch. Sphinx also has a 360 degree rotation. It's just a soft uh, joint, so no ratchet, and it does have a significant ab crunch. And for Speedstar, uh, it has a slight rotation. It doesn't actually rotate 360 degrees. I would say it's probably about a 30 degree rotation, but it does have a 90 degree ab crunch. That's part of the transformation, so you can actually bend them at 90 degrees. Uh, hips and thighs are all the same across all three. They all have a universal joint, so it gives you 360 degree rotation all around. Uh, the leg split on Phantasm and Sphinx is about the same. You get almost 180 degrees. Uh, Speedstar is the only one that comes out on top here. You can actually do the uh, leg split past 180 degrees. Uh, leg movement forward and back on Phantasm, it can go forward 90 degrees, but only goes back 45 degrees. The backpack gets in the way a little bit. Sphinx can go forward and back the full 90 degrees, and Speedstar is also only 90 degrees forward and back 45 degrees. Again, the backpack gets in the way on uh, Speedstar as well. Uh, for the knee, Phantasm has a ratcheted knee. It almost gets you 180 uh, degree bend. Uh, it also has a rotation at the knee of about of 180 degrees left and right. Uh, again, it is part of the transformation, but it allows you to have that flexibility. Sphinx only gets a 90 degree bend at the knee, and Speedstar, again, has a, a double pivot at the knee, so it gets 180 degrees, no problem. For the ankle, um, Phantasm has a uh, an in and out tilt just slightly, and it does have a forward toe tilt. For Sphinx, you can rotate the foot all the way in 90 degrees, and it does have a toe tilt forward and back. There's actually a lot of articulation going on there because of the way that the spoiler can be maneuvered uh, for the transformation and, and some other aspects. So there's a lot of flexibility in the uh, spoiler for the toe tilt. And then for Speedstar, you do also get a 90 degree uh, ankle rotation in, and there is a slight uh, toe tilt forward and backwards. So we just talk about price very quickly. Phantasm is going to be the most expensive. He is the most recent release and he is from Fans Toys, but he does come in at a whopping $200 US as opposed to both Sphinx and Speedstar, which are, um, you know, releases that came out a little while ago. I think Speedstar came out maybe, I want to say like a year and a half ago. And the original mold of uh, Cell came out I think it was around the same time. Um, but Sphinx right now, at least the cell version, was $100 US. Speedstar is a little all over the map. I, I checked a few places. He can range anywhere from $65 to $100 US. Um, so there is a significant price difference between these two guys and then Phantasm. So which one would I pick? Phantasm is just a well-built, clean, cartoon-accurate figure of Mirage. I'm really liking the light blue colors across the figure instead of the silver. 
Uh, the transformation is nice and simple and it gives you a nice, albeit smaller, alt mode. The paint chipping is a bit of a concern, but it did only happen on one of the two copies that I have. Uh, my biggest issue is actually the price tag, but you are paying for quality here. Sphinx, on the other hand, just doesn't do anything for me. It's not cartoon accurate. The wheels in behind the chest is a bit of an eyesore, and it just feels cheap and flimsy at times. Uh, the transformation is frightening. Um, the only thing I really like about the figure is actually the included parachute accessory. Speedstar, on the other hand, is an excellent representation of Mirage, and the colors and paint are outstanding. I actually have a hard time deciding between Phantasm and Speedstar just by looking at them, as I think Speedstar might have better shelf presence, but every time that I pick him up and pose him or transform him, the disappointment just comes right back. So for me, I'm going to go with Phantasm. The price tag is a bit steep, but it just looks and feels like a much better quality figure. However, it's a really close call. If you're happy with Speedstar, and I know a lot of you are, and you just can't justify that $200 price tag, don't. But you definitely won't be disappointed by spending the cash and upgrading to Phantasm. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button down below. Sure helps out a lot. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel as well so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you get all the notifications. Thanks a lot. This has been Transformers Masterpiece Theater. I'm the Rusty Mechanic, and we'll see you next time.